would do, I pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, we first come to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us see another day, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you open our minds and hearts today, Lord, so that we absorb and soak in all the information that we receive today, Lord, and that we apply to our everyday lives, Lord, so that we are enlightened and that we can enlighten others in our lives, Lord. And we are thankful, Lord, for all that you've done. We are grateful, and Lord, we would like to give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. In the Son, Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Good morning. My name is Ranisha Hurd, and I am your B Lunch president of History Club. The purpose of Black History Month is to celebrate and recognize the variety of African American men and women who devoted their lives to the political and economical upbringing of Black people as a whole, and also to encourage all Black people today to strive to make a difference in the community. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tim I'm the A-Lunch President of the History Club. The purpose of Black History Month is to celebrate and honor the history of African Americans and to recognize the important contribution that they have made to the United States. We here at Palma Pie and celebrating Black History Month, we can take satisfaction from the recent progress in the realization of the ideas envisioned by our founding fathers.
front of you this morning. In the way. Stay out of the project Africa in a negative light. Jungle savages can't follow nothing civilized. Why then naturally it was so negative that it was negative to you and me, and you and I began to hate it. We didn't want anybody telling us anything about Africa, much less calling us Africans. In hating Africa and in hating the Africans, we end up hating ourselves without even realizing it. Because you can't hate the roots of a tree and not hate the tree. You can't hate your origin and not end up hating yourself. You can't hate Africa and not hate yourself. Um, those words are from Malcolm X, and I think that they're very telling and very true to a lot of things uh, black Americans experience. Uh, our roots began from Africa. Africa is a continent with 53 different countries, and Ms. Etim and, Ms. Etim and I are proud to represent two of those countries. I represent the country of Nigeria. Um, just a little bit about where I'm from. Nigeria is on the west side of Africa, so it's a very, um, one of the largest countries in Africa. Um, I came to this country in 2001, and it was completely different from what I was normally used to. But in, to me, when I think about Black History Month, I think about how, although we all come from different parts of the world, we all have different roots, we all, there's still a connection that we all have together in terms of being from the same tree and being able to connect with that. And so just being here at this high school and being um, with all of you, I just want to remind us that um, we all have such great history be behind us and we all are standing on the backs and the shoulders of those who came behind us. And so I'm so glad that we're all here together to celebrate this. also on the west coast of Africa. If you are in 10th grade English, you should know where that is from our Africa unit. I heard that. <laughs> um, when I was younger and my family first came to the United States, I did not see race as black, white, Asian, um, Latino. I saw people as Liberian, which I was, and not Liberian. That was all there was in my understanding. And very quickly, I learned that in the US, things were more complicated. Um, our skin tone, our shade, and the history that came with that meant a lot to people for a lot of different reasons. And so Black History Month for me was a chance for me to understand where a lot of my black friends in school and their parents were coming from and the history of race in this country. Um, people talk about how their grandparents told them stories of the March on Washington and all of these things. Those weren't the stories I heard. Those were the stories I learned in school. And so when I was younger, Black History Month was a chance for me to take part in that. As I got older, I realized that a lot of my African American friends knew uh, the civil rights story, knew the slavery story, knew so much of what I was trying to learn, but missed a lot of the connection Malcolm X is speaking about to Africa. And so Black History Month for me became a time to talk about my culture um, and how I felt connected to them and how the leaders here in the US and the leaders in different countries in Africa, like Nelson Mandela, were working for similar goals and working for similar purposes. And so now I use Black History Month and kind of every week as a chance to talk about my culture and my history and why um, being African is great and finding your connection to Africa can be wonderful also. Uh, I am wearing a traditional Liberian gown, I guess. Uh, this is actually the gown I wore at my wedding. As a note, I did not wear, I did not marry a Liberian man, I married an American man, but he was a good sport. Uh, Jason here is wearing another slightly traditional outfit. It's got um, more designs. This is something you would wear just on a regular day. And uh, yeah, you can talk about that. So this top part here. 
This top part here is called head tie. Um, and traditional African attire is not completely dressed until you have your top part. So she's like completely dressed I lost. from top to bottom. Ms. Nelson is like three quarters dressed. <laughs> um, and then Shawnee has on what is uh, a bit more modern. There has been a little push in African fashion lately to have outfits that use a traditional uh, cloth and fabric, but also have a more Western cut. And so she has a slimmer skirt, um, and the shirt is sleeveless, and then the head tie is very different than what you see JC wearing. Um, and there's also a lot of people who choose just to uh, wear clothing with the African print. And this is normally called a dashiki, um, which is like a top that you can wear. Um, you can wear either both genders wear, both males and females have their own dashikis to wear. And it's just very casual, kind of like a top that you would wear with any everyday wear. So the last thing uh, Ms. Beckham and I want to leave you with is just some words of wisdom that we've gotten from our families. I find that I get a lot of inspiration from the words uh, and the quotes we get from Black history in the U.S. and I think that African history and tradition has a lot to offer those of us in America now today. And so something that I really hope you all take to heart, because I did, is my mother always says, um, if you do not say, I am, no one will say, you are. And I think that means a lot, especially for our young African American people here today. You need to know what you want, know who you are, and claim that before anyone else is going to look at you and tell you you are smart, or you are gifted, or you are whatever else. So if you don't say, I am, no one will say you are. Um, growing up, one thing my parents always told me was that it takes a village to raise a child. And I think that's something that's very commonly said. Um, I've heard that a lot among you know, my students. And to me, that really represents the community that we all share. Um, so we're not just individuals in our own soul existence. We all are here to support each other as students, as friends, as community members. It takes all of us together, be together to, to raise each other up and to support each other um, throughout our journey in life. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to perform poems. Yes. People preach about change, but the struggle still remains. So when we go from generations to generations and roots from roots, trying to make a change, have shed blood from youth and plundered our morals. The anger will boil while in society be set aside and seen as criminals or delusional beings for taking words and defining the meaning like we, the people. This justifies that authority should be equal to minority, not making profit as a priority for use of one's advantage. Can we evolve to a level that is far beyond the average accumulating our cons and placing them in a baggage? To never be open. We can never be broken. So let us stand united like the states we're resident to, and every soul is relevant to this commitment of innovating our future so struggle won't be persistent in this time of age. Why can't we turn the page from the culture that has captured and forced to cage us? So we must rise above for the sake of the love we once had for one another, which has gone missing for reasons I would wonder while people preach about change, but the struggle still remains. Wake up, my people. We can't get further and further behind. Nowadays, we'll let anybody hinder our grind. We must stop the hatred and crime and enlighten our minds. We can't fight the future with a gun over a couple of dimes. It's time to wake up, my people, and get a move on it. Our ancestors died for this. I guess it's what they wanted. The freedom, the opportunity, the free education. We have our whole life ahead of us. We just like the dedication. Mm. According to the Emancipation Proclamation, we were not free for our grief nor sympathy, but to end the Civil War, not our innocent cries. The 15th Amendment wasn't intended to give us the right to vote. It made it more difficult, so we won't. However, that's not the main focus of this poem. This is about how we have to keep going through every storm. Drug, sex, and money seem to be the only norm. 
Wake up, my people. We can't get further and further behind. Nowadays, we let anybody hinder our grind. And what I mean by grind, I ain't talking about crime. I ain't talking about selling drugs. I'm talking about empowering our mind. We being murdered and abused. We being murdered and abused, and it's still happening today. Not only by the white man, but majority of our own race. I have to say, we all know it's ignorance that we face. We blow our own candles out, vacant in a dark place. I mean, if life is what you make it, why not take advantage? Why not sit down and plan it? You can be anything you want on this planet. It all starts with you. Yes, you. I swear I'm telling the truth. I mean, what's the point of even going to church or school if we don't even listen and pay attention with our heads on our phone? Our Instagram always run about where everybody else got on. But we are the leaders, believers, overachievers, praying and hoping that Jesus oversees us. Lord, please have mercy through all this controversy. The struggle is real. We're just trying to make it through all this hatred and complications. And don't fear the future, my brothers and sisters. That's what they want you to do. Stuck in the hood, no opportunity yet they want you to lose. Don't get me confused. I'm not saying everybody perfect. I'm just asking if it's worth it. Wake up, my people. We can't we gotta get farther and further behind. Nowadays, we'll let anybody hinder our grind. We must stop the hatred and crime and enlighten our minds. We can't fight the future with a gun over a couple of dimes. Get that 
have stereotypes. And from an early age, I figured out the need that the problem with our kids today is that we can't read and believe. This is the biggest thing that will hinder you children from going off to college and taking degrees. And that's a known fact, not a secret operation. And things are kind of messed up if you're living in this nation. How can you throw all your money into entertainment and throw all of the leftovers into our education? They say they care about us, but where is the proof? Because the behavior is showing us a different truth. They're setting us, they're setting us up for failure and wanting us to lose. But instead, I picked up a pen and got us in the booth and used it as a tool to move up in life. No need to sell it my soul when Jesus paid the price. Is going to care. 
you had to carry. And young men, when you wear your pants down, can we just be real about it? You wear your pants down, you disrespect women, you don't have any respect for yourselves. When you do those things, no one else is going to have respect for you. And I appreciate the class. But what's more important to me is that when I see you next time, some of y'all pants will be pulled up. Some of y'all young men will stop listening and promoting this music that degrades our women and degrades our people. It's easy. It's easy to sit there and go along with it. It's easy. It's hard to stand up for what's right. It's hard to be the only one. When everyone else is joining and talking about somebody else because they may not have the same clothes or the same shoes that you got on. You don't know that person's situation at home. You don't know that their mom is working minimum wage 40 hours a week. And when she gets home, all she can do is make sure that her baby gets to bed and has something to eat. She's coming to school, or he's coming to school, and all that they have. But it's not about what you wear. It's about what's in here and what's in here. And that's what you can stand upon. Because what's in your mind, no one else can take away from you. What's in your heart, no one can take away from you. The football team, stand up. If you was on this football team, stand up. That won the state championship. Give it my hand. Presidents 
of universities and professors at universities. But everything that you do now is going to determine what you do in the future. If you think about any political race, what they do for every candidate, they look at their backgrounds. They try and find any dirt that they can on the person. And you can't let anyone, not even yourself, get in the way of your future. So when you leave this place today, I want you, if you haven't taken your education serious, take it serious. It's not okay to fail classes. It's not okay to be the class clown. It's not okay to fall asleep in class. But when you have done all that you can, you've studied as much as you can, you've asked for help as much as you can, you've gotten tutored as much as you can, then if you do still get that C, you'll be able to stand because you've done all that you can do. But I'm confident that most, if not all of you, after doing all that work, you all will get A's and B's and graduate from here with a quality education and a scholarship academic to go to any college that you want to. And if you don't want to go to college, you go to the workforce, you won't just be the crew member at McDonald's. But one day you're going to own your own McDonald's. But you only get there if we stick together and we do all that we can do to succeed. And then we can stand. Thank you for your time.
program, we would like to acknowledge, acknowledge participants and people that help History Club Corral. I would ask if Mr. Parker would come forward. This is a token from Congo High School History Club Corral and also History Club. We would like to thank you for coming out today. <laughs> I would like to ask if Mr. Rass would come forward. <laughs>
Uh, we have started with your little vacation. I know you're ready to work. I know students are ready to graduate.
Hello, my name is Tan Rouse, and I will proudly introduce you to the speaker of the hour, Par Mr. Peyton Parker, an Indiana native, is a December 2014 graduate of UAPB with a BS in Business Administration Management. He graduated a semester early at the top of his class. Mr. Payton has been preaching and speaking for the Lord officially for two years and seeks to, know, to be known as a man after God's own heart. Mr. Payton seeks to motivate, inspire, and encourage all you whose society often overlooks. Growing up in urban Indiana, he experienced firsthand what it's like to be judged as a young black man. His life serves as a testament that it's possible to succeed no matter what your circumstances are. This fall, Mr. Payton plans on attending a seminar school to obtain a master of divine and individually pastor a church. And I present to you, Mr. Peyton Parker. Thank you. Good morning.